Don't be one of them. Don't be one of them people who think they're a man, but then you drive by the house and they got a little spaghetti noodle mailbox post. You know, them types that get blown over when an EV vehicle drives at its maximum speed of 41 miles per hour and just knocks it over. No, you need yourself a manly, a tough, a strong mailbox. Mailbox post. And when people see it, they know you're somebody. I carried this six by six, 12 foot treated lumber piece and by myself in my barn. It's not at all true. I actually had both my sons who were 12 and 14 helping me carry it in because this is a heavy son of a gun, which is the beauty of it. You're gonna need a semi truck to knock over your mailbox if you place it on a post like this. Admittedly, sucker's intimidating because it's so heavy, it's difficult to maneuver, but I'm gonna show you. I've made a handful of these now, and I'm pretty sure I know what the heck I'm doing. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. So you can have yourself one big, giant size, strong mailbox post that makes a statement to anybody drives by that you are someone. And in fact, some crazy high school kid wants to come by and knock it over at night, let him. Let them. I'm gonna take a baseball bat to it. They're gonna break their own face. I'm gonna make this thing more manageable. The reality is I got a 12 foot piece. I'm gonna cut a two foot section off, three, three foot section off, and then a six foot section. That's it. That's what I'm gonna cut, just three pieces. And a two foot section actually probably gonna end up being about 22 inches before I'm all of a sudden done with it. That leaves me a foot, a foot left over. Now, if I was older, you know, cause I'm young, beautiful and youthful and in my prime, I'd probably get two six foot sections. That would work as well. Um, it, it would cost more though. It's gonna cost a little bit more to get two six foot sections versus one 12 foot section. So I'm cheap, I'm cheap. I do this a little bit on the side for a little extra money. I've, I, uh, hey, check out my market book place, Facebook marketplace down below in the description. I got a link to that, my eBay page as well. Uh, see all the goodies and junk that I like to collect and sell, whether it's antiques or vintage stuff, whatever. Anyway, let's get to it. I'm gonna cut three sections, two, three. I'm gonna cut the two footer off first. Because if you look at my table here, my, my miter saw table, which I made two, and there's on the marketplace, so I'm making more. Anyway, I'm gonna get about two foot over here, cut that off, then the three footer, and then I'm left with seven feet, and it makes it much, much more manageable. So I think one of the biggest pains and challenges of this, and probably intimidates people if you use this type of lumber, is I have a 10 inch miter saw. I got all lined up, ready to cut. But reality is that is not gonna go all the way through. So on top of that, then I gotta flip it over. So I'm gonna cut what I can and flip it over. But how can you make sure that when you flip it over and cut it again, that you're gonna get an exact, precise cut matching up with the other one? Well, my solution is pretty simple. It doesn't cost me a penny. I just take this two by four, line it up right here. I hold it down with a clamp. So when I flip it over, I just line it up with that perfectly with that and and they should match up perfectly it is important though you make sure that you are as flush with this on both sides as possible and then you shouldn't have any trouble <laughs> so I've cut that as deep as I can and then it's flipping it over <laughs> which which it's not fun because it's, it's uh, it takes, I did a video of me trying to put this thing in place because that's a pain in the butt. I mean, it's really heavy, obviously. And it's gonna be the same process. Now, the good news is it's gonna take off two feet, then I'm gonna take off three feet, and it just keeps getting lighter and lighter. If your miter saw has a, whoop, if it has a, a laser or a light, like mine's got a light, it can really help show, keep you on accurate as well. So, let me like this camera here a little bit better. I can do all this at one time here. <laughs> okay, so, I look at my light. Sure looks like it's lined up here and I can even come here with, my, with a square. And it looks like, looks like I'm all lined up. Now, I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be 100% uh, straight all the time, probably more like a 99%, maybe even 99 and a half, and maybe I'll get lucky and get 100%. But sure beats guesswork. Let's give it a shot. All right. Let's take a look, see here. Man, you can't even really feel the difference with your finger running across. Obviously, you can see where the saw cut, uh, Cross, but man, that's that's nice. That came out real good. So here are my three 
three pieces. Two foot, three foot, seven foot. Now I said I cut that six, but the truth is, you don't have to. You can leave a seven foot. Depending on how high you want your mailbox, determine if you want to cut more off of this or not. And here's the deal, I, I'm probably gonna leave right at seven foot because I'll just dig a little bit deeper as opposed to cutting this off. And it's actually for a customer, so they'll be able to decide if they want to dig deeper or actually they're gonna have to, eh, they're gonna to dig deeper if they want. Now it's gonna be, but it's gonna be like this. Be like that. This is gonna stick out back here. This is gonna go crisscross in here. So you can make this longer, of course. You can make this four foot. You can do whatever you want. Now, the truth is, at this point in time, all you've gotta do is join them, connect the pieces. I think with this heavy piece, you're crazy if you just try to use screws to connect this to this. This is, this is really heavy. My guess is at least 50 pounds. This board is actually very wet still. I mean, I do this and I can feel the moisture on it. It's not a bad thing at all. Board's gonna last forever. I mean, this is gonna last for 30 years plus. You don't have to do any of the other decorative stuff that I've done on mine, but I'm gonna show you how I do it in case you do. That came up pretty good. That wood was pinching my blade. Made it very difficult to get through there. So you can take a circular saw and move this, and I put it at a 45 degree angle. It's on here somewhere. Hey, right there, 45 degree angle, and that's how I cut that off. And that's gonna be the top of the post. Well, I'm, I got three pieces, as you know. I've got a big, long sucker. Got the medium, small. I'm gonna worry about this one right now because that's just gonna go in between the two. I've cut out, or I tried to cut anything out yet, but I marked out where I'm going to joint this. I'm going to cut this halfway down. Just going to squeeze in over here. X marks the spot. I'm going to cut that out as well. Now I also marked up here. This is where I'm going to run a router through just to make a little, you know, it's all for decoration. I set my radial arm saw, two and three quarter inch, whatever, up. Cause that's the, these six by six are actually only five and a half. So two and three quarter inch. And I'm gonna slice all that through one time. I'm not using my miter saw because my miter saw only goes up two inches. So it's, it's, it's insufficient. But the only time I ever used a radial arm saw, God bless your dad, it's from him. Hand me down a long time ago. Uh, but it's really the only time I ever used a radial arm saw. Speaking of, look, look at these suckers, look at these suckers. Look, that's a big old slab of walnut. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? Yeah. It's basically four foot by four foot. Either I'm gonna make an awesome cookie cutter. No, I'm gonna cookie cutter, what I'm saying. Cookie table. Walnut, sell it for a million bucks because this would be the most amazing coffee table you've ever seen in your life.
can't say I'm too happy with myself right now. I made some stupid mistakes, I think. And now it's a matter of trying to make sure it looks good for the client, because this is an ordered piece. Okay, from a distance. I don't think it looks all that bad, right? But the color here, I call this live edge part. Well, I thought it looked better than it does. Uh, I just don't like that big gap. Water's gonna come down, get in there, same thing here. So, see I trace it out with blue marker. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my, I don't know if it's a good idea. Wish you were here to tell me if it's a good idea or not. I'm gonna take my grinder and grind it out. And just kind of try to make it look kind of cool. And uh, see if that's a little less, I don't know, pops out too much. I think it's gonna work. I've given everything a light sanding. A light sanding. It's a mailbox post. Why would you go a nice, serious, this is not a coffee table. Dining room table, anyway. Nice soft uh, sanding. Now, two reasons for that. Number one, I like to sand the edges a little bit so you don't cut yourself on them, because they are, can get kind of sharp. Uh, secondly, I want to get rid of the splinters. You give it a light, they're gonna sell it to a client, they get a bunch of splinters, cut themselves. Now, this looks bad and lazy, I made my part. Uh, the other reason, is if they want to put a stain on it, I mean, there's no better time to do it than after a nice sanding. Nice deck and sanding. But I would say with this board here, it's still damp. You can feel the moisture in it still, and it's going to stay that way for a while. This is going to keep a nice, good look for, I would say, at least a year before it starts to look, how do you say this? Treated lumber starts to look faded, aged, at least a year. So they probably have a full year to get that stain on. Now I didn't stain the last two feet of it because that's going to be underground. How stupid would that be to st I said stain. Sand. How stupid it would be to sand something that's going to go in the ground with a bunch of dirt, concrete, however they're going to install it. So I've got everything cut, got everything sanded. Only thing left to do is to assemble it. I'm going to use a combination of a little bit of wood glue in the joints. And the biggest part will be these four and a half yeah four and a half inch exterior screws i like the black that's just me i like the contrast the black kind of pops a little bit gives a little i don't know modern look at the same time i think it's kind of a country look rusted look whatever black covers it all anyway i'll use my speed square to help me make sure that everything is as squared as possible got the big speed square um there's it's just kind of a, makes me feel comfortable because true this if it's really unsquare i'll have to go back and fix it we'll have to cut something Chances are that's not gonna be the case. If it's just, you know, one or two degree off, well, who cares? It's a mailbox post. Let's get to assembling this thing. The insides here, the joints, I do sand those down fairly good to get a nice uh, smooth surface in there. It helps everything, especially the glue, really come together and, and hold. Got a bunch of ridges in there like a ruffled potato chip. It's less likely to, it's not going to not hold, but it's just a, stronger connection if you see. 